Yes, guys, what's going on? Welcome to Stretford Paddock. I'm Adam McCola. He's Stephen Allison. Manchester United 3, Everton 3. Feels like that Everton game in 2012, then it's Steve. I feel like I've just come home to my house burgled. <laughs> oh, it's not a Scouse joke. That's literally how I feel. I feel gutted. I just watched us throw away three points. For what? For what? What went wrong? We were defending like we were 5 0 up. People not fucking jumping with a man. People just. And not just for the equaliser. The whole half, really. I think we said at half time, next goal is going to be crucial because if it's them, it might get tight. Fucking hell, I didn't expect them to equalise. And then obviously we get our noses in front. Scott McTominay gets on the end of one. It's not in United's nature to defend like, and shut it all down, but fucking hell. How, do, how are people talking about this team being title contenders when the defence is fucking gash? Like, we can score goals. Never had a fucking problem with this team. Always go, we can score goals. But do you know what? We probably won't win the league this year. And I've, I, you know, this, this, that's not new tonight. I've said City are my favourites since me and you did that preview back in fucking whenever we did it. But we won't win the league tonight and it will be because our defence isn't a championship winning defence. And that's it. We've got players who can win a league going forward, but we can't defend it. Um, there's been a lot of talk about Axel Twanzebe for that third goal obviously a lot happened after he gave the free kick away um, David De Gea some saying he could have been braver I didn't even it. and yeah, the De, first one De Gea's definitely got to be braver his fault. all the way through like they're all shit goals they're all shit goals they're just fucking shit goals mm. um, is it personnel is it yeah it is. organisation is no, it what it they're doing personnel. on the training pitch I think it is personnel when you see Bay in there one of them probably gets stopped with Bay in there because he's someone that just fucking has got the defensive instinct. I think too many of our players are maybe... This might not make sense to everybody, but I think we've got too many players in there who maybe were good footballers and got moved to centre-half to get games rather than defenders. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I think Lindel Victor Lindelof used to be a midfielder, holding yeah. midfielder, who dropped back in academy days or whatever. To and I don't, where, I don't know where Maguire... Played. I don't know where Shaw played. I don't know where. Well, we do know where Wan Bissaka played. But do you know what I mean? There's not defenders. They'll look People to keep are, the game alive yeah. rather than. No, they're good footballers. Keep it clean. When like we got some for, for Paddock FC. Obviously, it's fucking entirely different levels. But I've got a couple of players that'll go. I could play you anywhere because you've got a great technical ability and you understand the game. But you maybe aren't an out and out defender. Maybe you've not got that killer instinct of a like. You can play good footballers anywhere, but you can tell they're not Cavani up front. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? It's like Carrick and Berbatov were so good, they could fill in at centre-half. Yeah. But if the pressure was on in the last five minutes, they're going to get found out. Of course. And um, I think that's the kind of point you're alluding to. They're not natural defenders. And when you were speaking about Eric Bailly, I don't think he lets that one skim on his head to go back when Harry Maguire is probably in a better position to clear it for a start as this is on a second goal. And... We're just skimming it back into danger and the ball's coming back across to us. Um, I didn't even think Everton were that good today. That's what makes... It, in the first half, sorry, I thought at they played well point, they for had, the first 20 minutes. They had two goals and three shots. Yeah. For starters, like that shows you that we're limiting the chances that they're creating, but also that we've maybe got to do a bit better with fucking keeping them out when they do get the shots. How, how, how many fucking shots do we need to score three goals? Well, we had 13 shots when they had three and scored two. <laughs> Um, I thought today we missed maybe not so many clear cut chances, but there were so many opportunities. Rashford going through just the decision making. Marcus was so, wasn't and I watched, shooting I, I, I on his right foot, Diallo yesterday. But shooting on his sorry, left foot. The decision making of a young kid to see like the decision making at times. That's not fair because third the, so the level's poor. different. There's the so level much, is different, and I, so I, much I was more. obviously pointing out, but. The decision making is so poor at times, man. Like it's, I don't feel this is a front three or front four that are connected. No, it always not. feels like Bruno gets it, he wants to score. Rashford wants to score. Cavani, nobody's looking to treat each other to a goal. Well, that's why I was saying I would have got a, a, you know, Adama Traore. I would have got almost fucking anybody that plays for the rest of them. You have to have the balance. Beckham and Giggs were not the same style of winger. 
One like to, to play killer balls uh, and cross it. One like to take you on and run at you. They were entirely different. And I think you need a yin and yang sometimes. I don't think everyone can be the same. And I, I, Greenwood's doing fantastic with his development, but it's development. And, and he's not going to stay over on the right. He's eventually going to be a, a nine when he puts about three stone on. We need someone that's going to come in and unselfishly just fucking deliver for everybody else. And I don't know where that, that's going to come from. That's why I was a bit disappointed that the transfer window petered out the way it did because I think there's a real opportunity here. One player might be the difference between fucking dropping points like that, giving someone the night off so they're a, you know, a, a 10% higher level the following week, and that might be enough to, to actually have a special season here because... Very much like 2012. If we don't win the league, that's certainly a game where you go. You couldn't hold out in injury time. We was over allocated injury time. We was five minutes into four fucking minutes. Lads, Rose Ed, whatever fucking comes in. That's a concentration thing. That might be a concentration thing from Axel. Certainly a concentration thing from the whole fucking bat line once it comes into the box. And it was a ball thing from De Gea, in my yeah. opinion. You gotta, but he's you never, gotta hurt he's never fucking come and claimed the ball, ever. And that is a weakness of his. He's got to come and... A goalkeeping coach, you know, was saying a brilliant phrase. Was it a goalkeeping coach? It might have been Stepney. Claim crosses with violence. Just fucking well, they can. clear they can them in. knees up, elbows up. Of course. Can, goalkeepers get away with Pointy stuff. bits, mate. Just mm. fucking steam in. And if anyone gets in your way, it's a foul for you. Mm. Just fucking claim it with fucking violence. And he's never done it. And he's what? Is he 29, 30 now? He's never going to fucking do it. Is this the last, you know, the, when you're looking at some of the recent home games, these are the ones that show the big difference? Fucking hell. We've been so poor at home. This, Although, I think this is universal, actually. I think across Europe, the previous percentage of home games won was around about 52%. People would win like 52% of their home games. Obviously, you've got draws and losses in the other half of that. Um, it's down to like 37% matches won at home. I think the pre- for, the, I don't, for the Premier League, I don't know about Europe, I know Premier League, it's like the most away wins has ever, ever. been. Ever, yeah. ever. It's fucking nuts. So I don't know why that is. You know, obviously we're seeing a record breaking away form. We're obviously benefiting from it away. You've got to do something to fix it at home. Maybe there was a bit of a, a g up that you get from the crowd. I don't know what it is. I can't explain it. I can't explain why you're that much different without a crowd. It's still your home turf. It's still the pitch you play on the most regular. It's still your home dressing room. It's still the closest one to where you live, more than likely. Do you know what I mean? You've got all of the travel factors, the fuck around factor, the unfamiliarity factor, the the pitch isn't what I'm used to factor. It's bigger or smaller or fucking more cambered than whatever. You haven't got that. So I don't understand it. Hmm. It's such a shame, yeah. We've seen that goal we've seen from Bruno today. Yeah, in a draw. And we've got to sit here and feel... Well, it doesn't feel like a draw. No, it don't feel it like feels a like a draw. defeat. I'm fucking gutted. I'm absolutely gutted because that was a real fucking opportunity for us. And that, that's a fuck up. And <laughs> I guarantee some people blame Oli. Fuck off. you got to blame the Is there anything the he pitch. could have done different? Yeah, of course. Loads of things he could have done different. Should Was the substitution of Axel right, do you think? Who did he come on for again? So an attacking player, I think. Yeah. Is it Greenwood? Yeah. Yeah, probably. I don't know where he was playing. Maybe that was the problem. Is that it altered the shape? But ultimately, there's 11 fucking professionals on the pitch there that had to see out a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes, mate! And if and that's if you're forgetting the fact that we were 2-0 up and we tossed it off in a couple of minutes. Exactly. So I don't think at any point in Solskjaer's team talk at halftime or what he was saying on the sideline was it, hey, let's make it fucking interesting and let, concede two. And then let's just fucking make it rough in the final minutes of injury time. No one's saying that. No, I mean, and this fan base has got a weird fetish for fucking blaming Ollie for just move. Not everyone, but, you know, it's out there. And I just don't understand that for one, but I guarantee it'll be out there after that today. But I don't put any, not, no significant amount of blame on that for him. I mean, of course, the book stops with him. Every decision will rest with him. And I'm sure he'll come out and take full responsibility for it because he takes full responsibility and full ownership of everything. It's a fucking brilliant trait he's got. Um, it's just the complete opposite to Jose, really, who'd come out and started pointing fingers at all sorts. Probably mm. never play Axel ever again. Is <sighs> there any... Are there any positives? Fucking 
Bruno's breaking all sorts of fucking records. Cavani's absolutely mint. I can't believe we ever doubted him. Or, mm. you know, he's been absolute fantastic. Um, outside of that, no, not really. Mm. No. Yeah, it's it's flat one here, guys. Um, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Let us know how you're feeling. Like, comments, share, subscribe, all that jazz. We'll see you in a bit.